um, the spreading of the pestilence. Yeah, that's what I say. You stop breathing. You're, everything stops. So they say, God bless you, in case you die. I, I don't know which is more morbid. There you go. How about horseshoes? Anybody uh, believe horseshoes are good luck? You hang a horseshoe on your door, open end up. No, they like it. They come running. They laugh. They got this little evil laugh. A little impy laugh. The horseshoe is considered to be a good luck charm in uh, a lot of cultures. Belief in its magical powers traces back to the Greeks, who thought the element iron had the ability to ward off evil. So there you go. We're warding off evil. Horseshoes over the door, exactly. Not only were horseshoes rod of iron, they also took the shape of the crescent moon in um, 4th century uh, Greece, a symbol of fertility and good fortune. The belief... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I've seen a lot of them hanging over there, barn door, or wherever they do have one up. The belief in the talismanic powers of horseshoes passed from the Greeks to the Romans, then to the Christians. In the British Isles in the Middle Ages, when fear of witchcraft was rampant, oh, here we go, people attached horseshoes opened and up to the sides of their houses and doors. People thought witches feared horses and would shy away from any reminders of them. So there you go. You're warding off witches, supposedly. Okay. Boy, they had everything, you know. If you look cross-eyed, you, you were a witch. God forbid, you know. Uh, that was, I think that was a way to get rid of a lot of, a lot of uh, women who spoke their mind, basically. That's what I think. So, you ward off witches with that. Who knew? What about black cats? I think that is so silly. I love black cats. They're so pretty. But a black cat crossing your path is lucky or unlucky. Many cultures agree that black cats are powerful omens, but do they signify good or evil? Hmm. Good. I like I, They're pretty. Of course, the Egyptians revered all cats, black and otherwise. And it was there that the belief began that a black cat, black cat you say this ten times, it was there that the belief began that a black cat crossing your path brings good luck. I have a black and white one. I had a black one. I think they're beautiful cats. But, you know, ancient, you know, Egyptians, that, uh, that they were a symbol. They revered all cats. And their positive reputation was recorded again much later in the early 17th century. King Charles I kept and treasured a black cat is a pet. Upon its death, he is said to have lamented that his luck was gone. The supposed truth of the superstition was reinforced when he was arrested the very next day and charged with high treason. But during the Middle Ages, people in many other parts of Europe held quite the opposite belief. They thought black cats were familiars or companions of witches, or even witches themselves in disguise and that a black cat crossing your path was an indication of bad luck, a sign that the devil was watching you. Pfft. Yeah, that, well, it's the cows. <laughs> yeah, that, yep, when you knocked over the lantern. They were, they, they had uh, anything, anything with the witches. It, they were really, you know, it didn't matter. Um, and we're going to discuss witches, I think, next week. Witches and spooky and all that good stuff. The guy, more afraid of cows. <laughs> yeah, they were, Chris. They really were. Uh, that they were even, you know, witches themselves. So, this seems to have been the dominant belief held by the pilgrims when they came to America. Uh, perhaps explain the strong association between black hats and with witchcraft. That exists to this day in this country. Yeah, they're still wacky today, too. Okay. How about the... Okay, Chris, I know you're not going to believe this because I don't either. This is your number. 
I know, they're scary, aren't they, Valerie? The number 13 is unlucky. Yeah. Fear the number 13 has a name, but I can't even pronounce it. Never mind, write it. So, but it has its origin in Norse mythology. In a well-known tale, 12 gods were invited to dine at Valhalla. Uh, it's a magnificent uh, banquet hall in Asgard, the city of the gods. And Loki, the god of strife and evil, crashed the party, raising the number of attendees to 13. The other gods tried to kick Loki out, and in the struggle that ensued, Baldur, the favorite among them, was killed. Scandinavian avoidance of 13-member dinner parties and dislike of the number 13 itself spread to the rest of Europe. Yep, it, it, all the bad stuff spread like wildfire back then. It was reinforced in the Christian era by the story of the Last Supper, at which Judas the disciple was a 13th guest at the table. Many people still shy away from the number, but there's no evidence that 13 is unlucky. Yep, that's your number, Chris. So there's no real evidence about that. I'm just saying, you know... Um, yeah, that's your signature number. So it's interesting. I, that's everything. Go, a lot of it goes back. Yeah, it is for me too. I don't have any problem with it. Um, a lot of this, these superstitions go back to relating to witches. So they said, so, uh, you know, it's just interesting that, um, that things, you know, they trace it back to that. What a surprise, right? Okay. And a superstition in itself is any belief or practice that is irrational. It arises from ignorance, a misunderstanding of science, or a positive belief in which fate or magic or fear of that which is unknown. So that's kind of the, you know, the dictionary meaning of superstition. Um, it's often used to refer to religion not practiced by the majority of given society. Oh no, witches. Yeah, the witches. You gotta love it. Um, it. I love the superstitions. I really do. I think they're they're uh, something else. How about beginner's luck? You, this is usually said by someone who just lost a game to a beginner. Um, and beginner's luck is the idea that newbies are unusually likely to win when they, when they try out a sport game of activity for the first time. They might come out ahead because, uh, you know, they don't really know the game. They just do it. Yeah, yep, it does. Room falling over. Yeah, so with the hands itching, is a right-hand company... Left hand money. I forget which is which. I wish mine would itch more. That would be nice. Um, too much. Uh, the beginner's luck. It's just that the newbie has less stress. Um, and we know that anxiety can hamper performance. Or it could just, it could just be a fluke. A chance based, you know, gambling games. Or like many superstitions, a belief in beginner's luck might arise because of a confirmation bias. Confirmation bias is a phenomenon which people are more likely to remember events that fit their view. There you go. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> they're, they, they're called a herd. Or is it a gaggle? Is it a gaggle of freaks? If you believe you're going to win because you're a beginner, you're more likely to remember all the times you were right. How about picking up a penny? You guys pick up pennies? Do I believe in what? Depends what you're asking. Am I superstitious? I, I Well, I kind of said that before. I think maybe a little because I think we all do something unconsciously. We don't realize we're doing it. Like the salt thing. I do the salt thing. I don't know why. I just grew up doing that. So I still do it to this day. What about picking a penny? Pick up a penny and all day long you'll have good luck. This little ditty arises because finding money is lucky, of course. But it might also be a spinoff of another old rhyme. See, see a pin, pick it up, and all day long you'll have good luck. 
see a pin, let it lay, and your luck will pass away. There you, and there you go. So that picking up a penny, yes. Heads up means good luck. If it's tails up, you leave it alone, leave it lay. Of course, we don't have the ladders and the black cats. How about a rabbit's foot bringing you luck? Poor rabbit didn't bring him in. He did it. Circumstance. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. It is what it is. it's going to be. Yeah, I don't think you can change what's going to happen. Because we don't know what's going to happen. So, okay. The rat, lucky rabbit's foot. Talismans and amulets are a time-honored way of fending off evil. Consider the crosses and garlics that keep vampires away. Well, yeah. Of course, garlic and crosses keep the vampires away. Rabbit feel. Rabbit feel. I'm all right. Rabbit feet as talismans may hark back to early Celtic tribes. They may rise from hoodoo. A form, not voodoo, hoodoo. <laughs> yeah, no thanks. I'll pass. They may also arise from hoodoo, a form of African-American folk magic and superstition that blends Native American, European, and African tradition. Hoodoo, you do, voodoo. Yeah, hoodoo, not voodoo. Here, have a, yeah, the poor rabbits. I don't want their poor feet. How about the old saying, bad luck comes in threes, or death comes in threes? Remember that confirmation bias, the belief that bad luck comes in threes, is a classic example. A couple of things go wrong and believers start to look for the next bit of bad luck. A lost shoe might be forgotten one day, but as seen a third in the series of bad luck breaks the neck next. Um, it seems like death comes in three those, though, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it we do do. <laughs> yeah, pretty much, Chris. It's do do. I have to agree. Do do voodoo hoodoo. Um it's not pounded. I just think we grew up with it, you know? Um our parents did and passed down to us basically. Um And the other thing about mirrors. According to folklore, breaking a mirror is sure for way a surefire way to doom yourself to seven years. Um yeah, that's true. That's true. The superstition seems to arrive from belief mirrors just don't reflect your image. They hold bits of your soul. And that led people in the old days, uh, in especially the American South, to cover mirrors in the house when someone died so they don't trap their souls in there. Ooh. And like the number three, the number seven is associated with luck. Seven years is a long time to be unlucky, which may be why people have come with countermeasures to free themselves after breaking a mirror. These include in touching a piece of the broken mirror to a tombstone. There you go. Um, or grinding the mirror shards into powder. Yeah. So there you go. You break a mirror, go take a piece of it and touch it to a tombstone. How about, um, here's a, one of my favorites, the mark of Satan, the number 666. I don't know. I find 666 kind of creepy. They actually, that has to deal with Satan. Uh, three sixes in a row give people some chills. And it, this superstition, damn it, I'm still here. I hit a button. I'm terrible. Freaks are trapped in the looking glass. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Anyway, uh, this is superstition about 666. goes back to the Bible. In the book of Revelation, 666 is the number of the beast and is often interpreted as the mark of Satan. A sign of the end of times. According to uh, New York State University, the writer of Revelation was also was writing to persecuted Christians in code. So the numbers and names are maybe contemporary references. So, and... It, it, yeah, it really... In the book of Revelation, the 666 is given as the number of the beast. So there you go. Uh, I don't know. I mean, well, they've used it in horror movies for how long? That's very true. Huh. Yep, maybe they did it upside down. Who knows? These sixes in a row.